adventure, you no stopping next 13 miles. Well, all right then. Don't tell me what to do, sign. Oh yeah. We are living a life of luxury tonight. Got the generator going. And gonna cook up some delicious pizza with hand stretched dough and drinking some delicious beer here this light is way too bright oh oh my god holy shiza Whew. yep that's that's a little intense Ooh. oh oh uh. oh Okay, I guess that's as good as it's gonna get there. <laughs> I'm parked here at a trailhead and tomorrow morning we're gonna go up and check out probably one of my favorite hot springs that I've ever found before. And I apologize in advance if anybody asks where it is. I rather would not disclose that because that's part of the allure of finding hot springs is you got to put in the work, you know, you got to <laughs> you got to hit the streets, hit the streets, and figure out where the heck these things are. Plus, it's a bit of a faux pas to disclose them, especially on a social media platform like this. And I don't want to be that guy. So so anyway, let's get some dinner started and enjoy the evening. Oh, yeah. I'm finally starting to figure out how to make a good, uh, how to make a good pizza. Um, the key is, is to get your dough to room temperature. <coughs> the hard part is, is when room temperature in a truck camper, or my truck camper specifically, is about 50 degrees. It's not quite warm enough, so what I'll do is I'll... I'll put it in the oven and put the pilot light on and then that gets the interior of the oven or its environment that it's warming up in to you know about 75 or 80 degrees which is about perfect and then I leave it in there for about 45 minutes and it gets nice and soft and supple I personally prefer to use marinara del grosso it's an organic marinara and it seems to taste pretty dang good as well. It's not overly sweet like I've noticed about some marineras, so that's 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 a plus. I'm not making a dessert pie here, I'm making a pizza pie. I feel that the key to any pizza really is is fresh ingredients. And that means you gotta shred your own cheese. I don't want to sound like a snob here, but I guess I kinda am when it comes to food. Obviously. <laughs> the other key that I've found is, and this is after decades of making pizzas, is you don't want to overload your pizza. Like you don't need to have an entire block of cheese on top of your pizza because for one, it's not going to cook properly. And then secondly, Toppings are made to complement each other, not to compete with each other. Now, I like to use about 80% mozzarella and about 25% cheddar. And I hope there's somebody out there that recognizes that that adds up to over 100%. <laughs> and that's okay, too. All right, now after you got all your cheese, I'm going to ever so carefully place your toppings at exact distances. I feel like this is starting to become like an OCD pizza creator's channel at this point. A lot of these pizza joints, they sure do like to pile on the toppings and, and it just, it doesn't even taste good. It doesn't even taste like pizza. I know this is a really basic pizza to try to get up on my high horse on. But the, print, the same principle applies for all pizzas. Look at that pizza. Gorgeous. Doesn't it look so beautiful underneath this way too bright light? 
<laughs> now this stuff is gigantic slices. And I'm, I know I just said, don't overwhelm your pizza with toppings, but these things shrink down pretty significantly. So I'm just gonna slather this whole pizza with these things. And there we go, pizza. Let's get multiple shots. Bam, hazam. That's the key to a good channel. You gotta get all the shots, all directions. And then I'm gonna take this, put it in my oven, which is at about 425 degrees for roughly 15 to 17 minutes. All right, there we go, folks. Got the pizza all done. I got Zeta, Zeta on dish detail. I hope you all have a good evening. Well, top of the morning, everybody. I woke up this morning and found out that my voice has gotten slightly better. Here I am, getting some beautiful mountain fresh air, way, way back in the Idaho backcountry. I guess I'm not way back, cause there's a road that way about a quarter mile or so. This trail, it's a lot shorter than the other one but it's a lot of uphill. And usually it's pretty slippery. It's nice to see a change of scenery, get out into the mountains, get a bath. <laughs> and uh, get some fresh air, get the heart moving a little bit. Here we are, folks. Oh, ooh. <laughs> that was a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Funny story, last year when I was here, I set up my phone on a time lapse behind those logs. And as I came down them, I ate so much shit. <laughs> I was horizontal before gravity caught me and I hit hard. Like I am very glad that I still have some supple bones because that was a very hard impact and fortunately I was okay. I've got this whole place to myself today for now. So I'm gonna get in this water. Oh, I guess I don't have it all to myself today. <laughs> Well, anyway, let's get in this water and enjoy a beautiful day in Idaho. Let's enjoy a beautiful hot, let's enjoy a beautiful soak in the Idaho backcountry. What are you doing? Are you enjoying yourself? Folks, it looks like we made it to our next destination for the evening. I am currently parked up on top of Homestake Pass, and it's pretty chilly up here right now. It's currently 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and it looks like it's going to get down to about negative 10 to negative 15 or so tonight, I believe. So it's going to be a brisk one, but I have plenty of fuel left for my generator, so probably just let that run all night. Um... Picking up a little bit of solar right now from the sun. So yeah, let's uh let's jump outside and take a look at my 
my humble camp spot here for the evening. Come on up. You excited? Huh? It would be nice to not have to listen to a freeway tonight, but it certainly beats my other option, which is going into town and sleeping on the street, which I do more than my fair share of. That's uh, one of the realities of this lifestyle. If you are full-timing and you have a job where you have to be stationed in an area, you kind of have to be centralized around that area and it just so happens that i'm working right in town so that means that i have to sleep in town which i'm not a fan of at all i would much rather be out in the sticks or out in moab out in the country but for now i'm helping my friend build his house so it is what it is and it's got to get done so yeah my hands are starting to get cold. It's it's pretty damn chilly out here, so let's let's get set up for the evening. Pretty nice in here actually. I think all the solar gain from the windows being open has helped keep this place kind of warm. It's one of the reasons why I actually position my window like this. Not only is it is it good for we got some solar that I'm catching right now, but also that nice big window right there, all that nice warm sun that I'm gonna get for the next hour and a half to two hours is going to help keep this camper warm. Now I believe I've had some folks that were asking me about the catalytic converter, or <laughs> catalytic converter, that I've been using. Does it create a lot of moisture? And the answer is yes, it absolutely does. It's a huge issue that I've been finding. Um, one way to help mitigate that a little bit is my fan that I purchased. This little Makita fan which runs off of my tool batteries. A little 5 amp hour battery will last me about 10 hours on low. And it's super handy. It's got a... Uh, it'll oscillate eventually. There we go. This thing has really, really helped reduce the amount of moisture that just sits on my hardwood trim. Uh, up, up near the bed, I have been having some pretty nasty results from the last two years of not having enough air circulation in this camper during the winter times when you've got everything all shut down and you know all the the moisture that comes from your breath and then also the catalytic heater it it's got to settle somewhere and it's the cold places that actually where that moisture condenses and I have to usually, after about three days of camping, I have to lift my bed up, prop things underneath it, get this fan underneath there, and then get a dry source of heat, such as my AC-powered ceramic heater, and put it underneath my bed and let that area underneath there dry out because after a few days, it's, it's damn near a pool under there. If I wasn't aware of that, I probably would have significant mold growth. So just a word to the wise for any folks that plan on camping in a really, really moist environment, let alone a cold and moist environment, is pay attention to all those those spots where your heat is not going to access, like uh, storage closets and the cupboards that are to the left and to the right of my bed. Even the one underneath my television. You see, I actually have it propped open because even in that spot, I've been finding condensation around that perimeter of the of the camper. So, yeah, thought I'd let you guys know that. But anyway, I think I'm going to turn this camera off, crack open a beer, and get on the internet. Because I haven't been on the internet for four days now. So, I gotta get onto my channel and see... See what's going on. See if you guys have any more questions for me. Yeah. 
Hey, Kenny. <laughs> so I've been in the camper this morning waiting to go out on the hike. Kona? <laughs> okay, calm down. She gets so excited about going to bed. <laughs> After she gets done eating her food and drinking her water, she's doing that, like jumps up on that seat and just looks at me or puts her head down on the bed and just looks back at me and just gives you those sad, sad dog eyes. Like, aren't you going to let me go up? <laughs> I've been working on it about trying to make sure that she doesn't jump up there without my permission because one of these days she's going to be super muddy and I do not want her jumping up on my bed when she's all muddy like that. So anyway, that's probably the end of this video and I hope you all have a good day. Now I gotta say, I'm incredibly frustrated right now. I didn't even use batteries last night for heat and they're completely dead. I just spent $600 on truck batteries and understandably those were on their way out last year. But these Lifeline six fold batteries, they should have had another six years probably of life in them if I took care of them, which I did. I never let them get down below 50%. And whenever I found myself boondocking and wasn't getting enough charge, I would uh, switch over to the catalytic so that I wouldn't get below that 50% mark. I'm coming to conclude that it's a wiring issue. The person that fixed my wiring on my camper made a mistake. And that mistake ended up destroying my batteries. And I don't know if he's going to fess up to uh, buying the new batteries. I'm also starting to think that maybe this catalytic heater is good for my lungs because I'm having a really hard time talking right now. It's extremely frustrating as well. This is definitely becoming a very frustrating day and it's just begun. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry to, sorry to leave this this video at this level of frustration, but that's just reality sometimes, you know? I don't want to pamper up my channel and make everything seem like it's just some fluffy dream reality when in actuality, like, crap happens. Things break. Sickness happens. Dogs chew on things they're not supposed to. Everybody has problems, and I'm no exception to that. This lifestyle can be really hard. It's not what a lot of YouTubers out there make it seem like it is, where it's just traveling all the time and fluffy rainbows and unicorn farts. It is not like that. <laughs> I mean, for some people it is, but even folks that find themselves more financially stable and don't have to work. I'm sure they also have their own issues too, especially with this lifestyle. <laughs> There's definitely been times over these last two years where I just thought to myself, I really wanna just take a break or even stop completely because mornings like this morning, it's a it's a hard morning. You know, my my throat's all congested I sound like absolute shit and I feel like it too. Didn't get good sleep last night because it's literally a refrigerator in here. <laughs> because I just, there's just constant, there's bills piling up essentially. Um, and realistically, I shouldn't be running around lollygagging and, and spending more money, and, you know, and then creating videos like this. It's, uh, it provides no financial benefit whatsoever. And it's unfortunate that I have to reduce my, my current life right now just to making money. But that's the reality of, you know, 99% of us out there is we have to 
sacrifice. Anyway, yeah, I'm rambling. It's time to get back to reality and get back to work. These last four days have been really wonderful. Just getting out and getting the phone completely turned off and escaping reality. It was, it was a wonderful thing. I wish I could make my reality living out in the woods and creating content for you guys, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. I would have to have a, a massive channel for that to be a possibility. And I think I, I lack a lot of skills necessary to be able to do that. And not to mention looks, it seems like being a close to middle-aged guy, or probably middle-aged, I guess it depends on how long you live. <laughs> Balding, fat, overweight. Uh, they kind of, you know, the cards are kind of stacked against me a little bit. I don't know, it's it's still a possibility, but I, I don't didn't really make this channel expecting to be famous or become YouTube famous. Anytime that I've said that, I, I've been joking about it because I realize that my my priorities are not set in that way. And this is just kind of a hobby, and I enjoy I enjoy I've always enjoyed photography and cinematography. So this has been a nice uh, outlet to be able to create um, videos and be able to take you and my family who watches the channel and my friends out along with me on these adventures because they're a long ways away. And that's essentially pretty much all this channel is. And if it, it if it, some weird crazy chance the YouTube algorithm bumps me to the top and I find myself becoming a better content creator and, and somehow I end up being able to monetize my channel to the amount that I can stop swinging the hammer, literally speaking, that would be a that would be a nice change. I, I, I would actually really enjoy that. It would be nice to have a, a change of lifestyles, even though I like carpentry and I like the difficulties that it presents. Something about traveling around and that that fictitious uh, lifestyle that so many creators put out out there. That seems a little bit better than what I'm currently doing. <clears throat> But anyway, I'm going to cut this video short here and wish you all a good day. This is the end of this video. Um, and I'll see you on the next one.